the daily or the ASU Dub Wiki, things like that, to make students more aware of where their money is going. Because that's critically important. Making sure that students see that their money is being used effectively, efficiently, and correctly by their board of directors to benefit them directly. All right, Jocelyn. What's an example of a difficult financial decision you've witnessed within a large organization and how did you approach it? Yeah, um, so with my position with the University Bookstore, what we're seeing is we moved from our bookstore from the hub to Odegaard. And unfortunately, a lot of students aren't aware that we have a branch in Odegaard and it also closes at five and a lot of students obviously study pretty late into those times. Um, and as a bookstore, we've looked reflectively on whether or not it's really reaching out to the amount of students. And what we ended up making the decision was remaining in Odegaard because we are going to have a position in the hub when it comes uh, when the hub reopens and it was a big financial decision for all of the trustees and then also the CEO of the bookstore and the several other uh, faculty that make up that position um, so financially wise that was a huge decision for us we're taking a hit um, under that model uh, but we are reaching out to students in those hours and that's something that we decided was more important than taking that hit uh, and that's something that we're definitely, and I'm going to be overlooking with vice presidential position next year, making sure that we're reaching out to students and remaining within our financial constraints. And um, that's what I've learned with the bookstore position. So, Sam, how would you approach to, um, approach strategic planning to be different in, this year to prevent a budget shortfall? Absolutely. Well, that's something that we've been working on this year with strategic planning. Um, on the board, what we did was, as soon as we got elected, we had a summer retreat where we set five strategic goals for ourselves. Um, and we've made sure that those goals are then carried in and throughout our association. Each individual board member has their own liaisons, and they have worked with their liaisons to make sure that those goals are implemented. And what that basically means is that we're making sure that the, each ind individual entity is representing our ACW goals as a whole. So with strategic planning for next year, I would like to do a similar approach where we come up with new goals. Um, some may overlap with our goals that we have currently and making sure that as a result, the budget that each of our individual entities represents those goals effectively. And I want to make sure that I will work with those entities to really empower them and help them reach those goals, which is something that I've done this year with all of my individual liaisonships. Um, and making sure that when they spend their money, it's going back to reflecting the values that we have set for our association. Um, we are here to advocate for students, to provide programs for students, and to provide services for students. We are ultimately here to serve students, and I want to make sure that those budgets reflect those goals. So that's what I'll do for next year. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Robert Higa and I'm running for Director of Programming with Huskies United. The Director of Programming needs to be a resource for all groups in the planning process 
in developing their programs and as far as um, being, um, finding their location, also the timeline for their events. I have that experience being the assistant coordinator for Arts Entertainment, which is an office that puts on consistent programming throughout the year. Next year, I want programming to be um, more collaborative programming amongst groups, bringing together um, various groups from within internal to HTML, also external. Especially with lack of funding these days, why not bring together budgets to create high quality events? Um, I also want to make sure that um, program maintains very high quality. I have had extensive um, experience with programming from various communities, being advocacy-based programming with the reality to res restore funding. Programming within my chapter, my fraternity Delta Chi, and next year I can promise you that I'm going to um, make sure that I'm going to everything that I envision for program is going to be happening because this is everything that I'm already putting into practice. Thank you. radio next year and how do you plan to increase services with these fewer resources? Well Rainy Dog Radio has a, a great strong history and I feel that with the budget deficit that uh, is a current issue with the Rainy Dog Radio I feel that it's important to maintain Rainy Dog Radio on campus um, and what's important about that is that Rainy Dog Radio hasn't really been out uh, communicating or interacting with Huskies um, in the past and what needs to increase is the visibility of Rainy Dog Radio. What I'm thinking is having Rainy Dog Radio get involved directly with different organizations on campus, different events, maybe having them host, maybe having like a Rainy Dog Radio DJ come and host um, programs that different organizations host on campus and maybe even having, you know, like caller number 13 gets uh, a free ticket or a free t-shirt of uh, an artist that's coming for arts and entertainment um, for the fall flame or spring spring. So what we, do, what we really need to do is Rain Dog Radio hasn't been, um, uh, hasn't been a very good resource to all these organizations and we need to reestablish that. And the best way would be maybe like increasing tabling during um, events on campus or even weekly or bi-weekly tabling in Red Square and just getting their name out there. And also, oh, actually also, also maybe partnering with uh, local organizations and businesses around campus, because I know personally that there are a lot of businesses that are ready to put down money for the University of Washington, and really collaborating with them to get resources that will make our campus even better than what it is right now. All right, Robert. In your platform, you mentioned non-traditional campus spaces, mm -hmm. and um, we're wondering what non-traditional campus space do you feel is not currently being used, okay. and what will these spaces cost? Okay, so I originally said that because um, with the hub closure right now, we are looking at mm -hmm. Mini Hall and Kane Hall as our main place to hold events, and if you're unaware, those are very expensive places to have events, and for smaller groups that want to put it on programs, it's out of their budget. And so when this year for Arts Entertainment, with the hub being closed, we had to look for a um, place to host our events. And we've looked in places like Gould Hall, which um, is an amazing open space, has a nice big hardwood floor, has staircases that go up and down. So you can have um, a performance, you can set up chairs, you can bring chairs from outside um, and have, let's say you wanted to bring like Massive Monkeys, which is a performing group that we had over in um, the residence halls. Um, having them perform in that space. And as far as the cost, um, I'm not sure about the specifics, but I know that it's something that RSOs can use through um, classroom support services, and it's something that's available to RSOs. Okay. Sonia, what is the status of distributing scholarships via the Husky Pride Fund, and what are your plans for the future of the program? So the Husky Pride Fund has uh, been doing a great job, and it is time uh, next year to disperse uh, all the fund, all the uh, for the scholarship that we raise money for. And I have um, directly not been involved with the Husky Pride Fund, but I have indirectly um, supported the Husky Pride Fund by donating and also buying the cool T-shirt that they have. But uh, what I plan to do next year is going beyond the chain jars and the T-shirt. Maybe having. Um, you know, more tabling of the Husky Pride Fund and getting that out there. So maybe like Retro or the Maps Talent Show or Daisy the Maka, having them out there, you know, um, getting them and getting people informed. There's students coming in and parents coming in and alumni um, to these events, having them informed of what the Husky Pride Fund is and really trying to increase um, the scholarship funding as much as possible. And 
Uh, maybe even having uh, next year, we're celebrating our 150th anniversary at University of Washington. So homecoming is big, and having Husky Pride Fund, maybe um, trying to get donations from local businesses there, not just homecoming, but maybe like a week-long uh, celebration of the 150th anniversary that we'll really, we will be celebrating. So really incorporating all these events to increase um, the name of the Husky Pride Fund and the funding itself. Robert, what are your plans for homecoming? And with limited resources, how will you engage students in this tradition? So, in the past years, homecoming has been funded by the Alumni Association. And last year, when they were trying to put on the rally, unfortunately, um, the Alumni Association had to back out. So, as far as <coughs> planning process for homecoming, it first is all going to depend on how much money that the Alumni Association is going to be able to um, supply us this year. Um, so, working with um, Colleen Fakui Sketchley, the President of the Alumni Association, seeing what resources that she can provide for us. And then from there on, I can work with um, Mindy, who is the Art to Say Program and Diversity um, Director, and start getting more campus communities involved in the whole planning process. Because I envision um, friendly competitions. From when I lived in the Greek community, we had um, friendly competitions amongst different houses. And that was something that was really fun, and something I wanted to bring and expand to the whole campus community, and all the way down to um, the homecoming football game. And hopefully that we can re-implement the rally um, by securing funding. Thank you, guys. Juan Soto and I'm running for Director of Communications next year. Uh, I'm a junior year dual major in Communications and Latin American Studies. Uh, some of my qualifications for this position include a wide variety of experiences in the marketing field ranging from guerrilla marketing approaches by handing out flyers and just promoting the hello out of events uh, and to be an intern in the Master Association in the PR department promoting events such as Fill the Boot, Change for Master Dystrophy, Hopefully Find a Cure. Um, in my fraternity, I've been a, the new member e educator as well as the ASU Dub Senator in slash IFC delegate, bringing back information that is crucial, information necessary for the sex of our uh, fraternity. I, I was also the backstairs coordinator for our philanthropy, Miss Greek, which occurred uh, a few weeks ago, where we raised $15,000 for cancer research. Uh, so all the goals I want to see in ASU Dub next year is improving the communication between ASU Dub and the students, uh, overhauling our current communication system, and bringing the university campus together as one. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Nance and I'm running for Director of Communications because I truly want to empower students' voices. I have two main goals for next year. First of all, I want to brand ASUDEP and ensure that we're communicating what ASUDEP is doing to the entire student body. This past summer, I interned at Boeing and I worked on marketing and public relations strategies at Boeing. And I want to make sure I bring that experience, as well as my internal ASUW knowledge, to ASUW and make sure that we're communicating with all students on this campus. Second of all, I think that the Director of Communications needs to be a strong spokesperson for this university. This year, I am serving as the ASUW Student Senate Vice Chair, which has been such a privilege. But what my job is, is that I communicate the official student opinion for all 40,000 students to the ASUW Board of Directors. Also, under, underneath this, this part of the conversation, I have been down to Olympia many times, about nine to ten times this <coughs> legislative session, to testify in front of committees and to talk with legislators personally. I think that these experiences prove that I have, I'm really passionate about standing up for students and ensuring that student voices are being heard. And as Director of Communications next year, I really work hard to ensure that all students from all communities on campus are being reached out to, that they know what ASU Dub is doing, and so that they can be engaged back into ASU Dub and we can all work together to fight for our common values. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Sabrina Squires. I'm running for Director of Communications on the Huskies United ticket. I'm currently a sophomore pursuing my double majors in political science and mass communications with a focus in journalism. The ASU Dub is in desperate need for a director that has professional communication skills that will get the student interest out to the local media. 